So welcome to the Quality of Mind Transforming Business podcast. This is where we explore the new game-changing understanding that can unlock new levels of performance, resourcefulness, and well-being in the workplace. Join us if you want to be part of the new breed of leaders in business. Join us if you're fed up with the conventional echo chamber. And join us if you want to be part of the new revolution in understanding how the mind works and recognize that we are more than just our psychology and that that can lead to better results. Hello and welcome to the Quality of Mind Transforming Business podcast series. So welcome to today's episode. And today I have a guest and we're going to have a great chat. And my guest is Dr. Giles P. Croft. And I'm going to let Giles introduce himself from afar and really like what he's talking about um, because he works in a very similar area, yet with his own flavor on, on the understanding behind quality of mind. So, Giles, welcome to the show and tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Oh, thanks for having me on, Piers. Uh, yeah, I'm Giles. I had a, a fairly sort of s- standard medical upbringing and uh, uh, ended up ended up doing, um, ended up becoming a surgeon. Um, and I did that for a few years, uh, before, um, going off sideways into managing information in healthcare was this, the step that I took. And, um, I had, I had too many outside interests to, to, to sell my soul to surgery for the rest of my life. Um, and then sort of went on a, a bit of a journey of, uh, of discovery, I suppose, trying all sorts of different things, it went through the old, uh, the good old fashioned personal development uh, odyssey, reading all the books and doing all the work and stuff, and 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 then a, a, a like you say, peers, a, a few years ago, came across this understanding um, of behind quality of mind, and and everything really shifted for me, and uh, and ironically, it's kind of it's kind of brought me back, it's kind of brought me back full circle to um, to therapeutic work, really, because I can you know see the see the potential of this for for our for our physical and our mental health. So you're no longer sort of cutting people up while they're asleep um, for a living. <laughs> Hopefully you're waking them up to see something new. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, yes. Um, brilliant. So what we were going to talk about today, and there's probably lots of things will pop into this conversation, but the, but the thing that you and I were just discussing was um, this phenomena that's known as burnout. Now, you and I have, you know, had quite a few clients that would know they're suffering from this. And that's probably why they come to someone like you or I. And we probably have clients that retrospectively thought they've had it. But just before we get into it, can you give us just a little bit of a view from your perspective on what we mean when we say burnout? Well, what is it? How does it land for you? And when you think Yeah, of- I mean, the, 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 the the classic symptoms are are kind of like a, a an, an inability to to go on doing the work that you're doing. There's a sort of a detachment from it. There's a sort of a there's a there's a flatness. There's a um, there's almost a, a, there's a there's a there's a lack of empathy. It's 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 classically seen in in jobs where um, empathy is part of the you know the the caring profession it's 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 very common in in the medical profession for sure um and it's it's distinct from i mean i'm no gosh i'm no expert in the symptoms but it's distinct from depression it's it's you know there there may be some there may be some overlap and you know i mean part of it <laughs> is when you go when you go looking looking online for you know if you typed into google what is burnout there'll be there'd be a whole load of different definitions about how it shows up and what the causes are and what to do about it. And it's only, I think it was last year that the World Health Organization recognized it as a phenomenon. They've not, they've not said it's a I think they've not said it's a diagnosis per se. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you can remember the the the, the precise the precise way that they would. Oh, an occupational condition or something. Oh, but they've okay. they've tied it into the workplace basically. They've tied it into the workplace. So 
that's the you know that's the 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 classic understanding of burnout um and i know that you know you, you and i have a have a um a, a particular way of 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 seeing the 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 causes that lead to burnout so just before we get into that just yeah. so in case someone's thinking because there might be some people who have been diagnosed even informally with it but there might be people who actually like go oh, well, do i have this thing so I mean, for me, how I would describe how it might turn up for someone, I think you're absolutely right. People just feel like they can't go on. But it also would be, um, and it does overlap with some of the symptoms of depression, but it would be a sense of kind of overwhelm, procrastination, feeling disconnected, feeling like you just run out of mojo. Uh, you know, there's no there's sort of your, your energy's gone or, or you're running on sort of adrenaline. So you're kind of hyper. And that the mind's kind of whirring quite fast. So it's kind of a bit of both. Sometimes you're very sort of disassociated and sometimes you're like whirring, whirring. And things go from kind of molehills to mountains quite fast. Um, Might be struggling with some health. You know, your immune system might be down. So you might be getting colds and flus and things like that. Um, And there's probably also a kind of the future doesn't look very rosy. So Mm. similar to depression, but a bit different. Is there anything you would say on how you would see it turning up in case someone's just not quite sure whether they're there? Yeah, or on a the lot, way? a lot, a lot of what you said. Then, I mean, I, I had a client who needed to be told that he had burnout. He didn't. Yeah. No, you know, he was a he was a um, a, a very senior professional who'd devoted his life to a particular career and was doing more and more in that career and was taking on more and more responsibility and gradually sort of started feeling that I love the word disconnect for it. He started Mm. to feel that disconnect from something that he'd really, you know, he'd really got a, a, a sense of being a part of, uh, previously. Um, and he, you know, he'd been given a whole load of solutions, which was to kind of like a com- strange combination of becoming more, more specialized and yet doing a more variety of things. And he took that literally. And so he took on even more and more and more mm. and more and got to the point where, yeah, he was, he was very, very bleak about the future. I mean, I remember when I first met him, he, 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 he said that he wouldn't, he wouldn't have cared if he died. It's not that he mm. wanted to end his life or anything. Mm. It's just that it'd be like, well, that would probably be a bit better than this. Yes, <laughs> it was a mm-hmm. real disconnect. Yeah, it's. I mean, I often use a metaphor of, and this may not work for everyone, but of, it's like running life with the choke really far out. So in the old days, cars would have this little lever you pulled out, which was a choke, which would keep the rev counter high so you didn't stall, right? And you could tell it was out because the lever was out and the smoke coming out the back and, you know, <laughs> the, the, the engine was running rich. Now, nowadays, you have automatic chokes. We don't know it chokes mm. out, but there is still a choke. Mm. It keeps your engine idle. I'm talking now about combustion engine, not electric cars, obviously. Um, so... It's like we're running life with the choke out, fully out, right? So we're whirring the system. Now, people get glimpses of that on like bank holiday weekends or, or, or a bit of holiday where the system slows down a bit, but they struggle to, they just get itchy, they get irritable, they can't relax. And then if they do, they kind of then can't get off the sofa for a bit mm. because it's almost like, the system's taken an opportunity to revitalize and they just get, and then because they're not, you know, they think that's a bad thing to do in life. They kind of kick themselves, willpower themselves to get going again. Mm. And the system's just trying to restore. Mm. So I think there's quite um, a normalized, invisible element of us running around literally and metaphorically with the choke out um, on the way to, 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 to burnout. And then if we don't, sort of do anything about that, we'll just get more and more disconnected, less and less in our mojo, less and less resourceful, less and less creative, less and less resilient, um, until maybe the system will just kind of press control out, delete, mm. and boom, we, we just can't get out of bed or whatever. Yeah. I, I think that I think the invisible nature of it is is 
it is really key because we're, I mean, we're amazing beings and we kind of adjust to these things, don't we? Mm. So we take a whole load on and there's a busyness associated with that, you know, both a physical and a mental busyness. And then we adjust to our new normal and then a bit more comes along and we adjust to our new normal. And, you know, there's nobody there just gently pointing us back to, well, hang on a minute, you know, had, had you noticed just how, fast you're 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 living your life here and it's like yeah but i've got to live it fast because of my job and everything mm. it's just part, part and parcel of it it's what i've signed up for and that's not actually the case yeah now i think it's a it's a really interesting thing there because let's make a distinction here between i'm going to use another metaphor between running your life where you're achieving a lot and getting a lot done when it feels like more like sailing in the metaphor i'm going to use versus rowing, right? Mm-hmm. So, so rowing requires effort. Mm-hmm. Kind of dis- I mean, you know, I know you can row in, in flow, but I'm just using the, the wind versus the sort of, sort of willpower. So, so rowing is when like to get, to be busy at life, you, you push through yeah. willpower, discipline, come on, carrot and stick kind of thing. And you do more and more and more because you think that's what the game of life's about. Mm-hmm. And that's how you think you achieve stuff. Mm. Um, and that's the busyness you're talking about, right? Now, that doesn't mean we can't be super effective and have full lives, but we might be then doing it more with the wind behind us, right? Mm-hmm. So we're just not effortlessly, but there's a there's sort of more of an ease, there's less grind, there's less push, 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 push. You just seem to get a lot done. You almost don't know it. And at the end of the day, you've gone, huh, what a great day. <laughs> yeah. Got loads done. But there wasn't that feeling of push. Um, now I think, so what we're saying is by all means have a full and busy and engaged life, but spot, are you, you know, does it feel more like rowing or does it feel more like sailing? If you understand the metaphor, does does that make sense, Giles, without describing that? Yeah, it, it, it does. I mean, is, is, is what we're talking about here control? Is it, is it that the, 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 the rowing is, a, is very much, it's like, right, this is on me. Um, I've got to make this happen and this happen. And I, I'm in charge of this. And, and when I do this, this is going to happen. And it's kind of like juggling all of that stuff mentally, trying to hold on to it and having it all just grinding away in your head as opposed to, going with the flow of life and 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 you know we're what we're built for as far as i can see is going with the flow of life and um we've got everything that we need to respond in the present moment to 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 what shows up doesn't mean to say we can't plan and stuff but it's not it's like it's yeah r- rowing for me means control whereas whereas sailing is more of a going with the flow thing. Uh, yeah, and I think there are very different, what I would call apertures. They're coming from different apertures. And I think control is a symptom of a lower contracted aperture, as is self-identification that this is on me. I need to do this to be okay in life. So, yeah. so we're very attached to an outcome. That, whereas sometimes when we're in a higher aperture and more sailing, there's a more neutrality to where life goes, right? Yeah. But when we're in that kind of, I need to achieve this promotion or I need to be this five roles at once, the best... Yeah parent I can be, the best spouse I can be, the best child I can be, the best teacher I can be, the best employee I can be, the best blah, 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 blah. blah. And that's all on you. There's a lot of self-identification, a mm. lot of layering and mm. control absolutely yeah. would, would be part of that. So they're, they're different apertures. And I think it's the it's that contracted aperture that will lead to the burnout. Mm. Now, you also mentioned an interesting thing about, you know, we're amazing creatures and we've got a lot going for us. So let, let, let's steer the conversation towards that. But, but I think the really interesting place I want to start that bit is how would you describe compared to how the rest of society might do this, what you think the feelings or sensations mm. of burnout are telling us and coming from? How would you describe that compared to where most people would think that's coming from and telling us? Yeah. Uh, so, so, you know, c- classically we, we, we're sort of conditioned to think that, um, um, I, I've got these feelings because of what's going on. I've got mm. these feelings because of the environment I'm in. I, you know, I, I feel like this 
because I've got a really stressful job. Don't, don't you know? You know, mm. that, that's, you know, and that's, you know, that's fine. That's no one's ever told us any different, really, to be fair. Um, but the, the way I see the feelings now is that the, the feelings are very much, um, well, they're, te- they're telling us how much the choke is pulled out, aren't they, really? They're, they're a reflection of our experience itself. They're a reflection of not what we're experiencing in life, but how we're experiencing life. Have we got the choke? Have we got the choke out? Have we got our foot pressed right to the floor? We seem to be coming up with car metaphors. Yeah. <laughs> in sailing, sorry, yeah. Sort of a vaguely transport-related yeah. <laughs> podcast episode. Um, but yeah, so, um, and and if you ignore those feelings, if you ignore, they, they, they're just going to get louder and louder. They're like, they're, they're, like, <laughs> they're like a little light that comes on on the dashboard mm. to say, you know, take your foot off the gas. Take your foot off the gas. Um, and, you know, you know, n- nobody wakes up one day burnt out. It's, mm. a, it's a process that happens and it starts, it starts small and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And to, to, to have an understanding that, that, that our, f- that our feelings are a, are, are a guide to that, to, to how we're, how we're experiencing the life, you know, how we're relating to life. Um, well, that's, that's incredibly helpful because, um, you know, I know just mm. in, in my own life, I can only talk about my own experience, but, but when I get those bad feelings, I know, oh, hang on a minute, you know, there's, there's something to see here. There's, you know, I've, I've, I've lost sight. I've lost sight of how, how experience in the world actually works. Mm. And, and, you know, and I'm up in my head about the whole thing. And it's time to, you know, just let go of that a little bit and slow down. So actually then, we're saying they are helpful and useful. These, as you, as we call, does might describe bad feelings, and whether that's anxiety, stress, depression, or burnout, whatever, whatever it applies to any kind of sensational feedback, right? They are, we're actually saying, they're useful indicators, but they're not. This is the key, isn't it? That we're hmm. saying they're not indicators to what is going on in the content of your reality in your life, your yeah. perceived reality, right? That that they're not telling you anything about that. They're telling you where the aperture is. That they're telling you where that choke is, yeah. and therefore, thank you very much, sensation, because <laughs> yeah. I, I now know. Oh yeah, right. That's that's given me a clue that uh, how I'm sort of coming at this. Yeah. Um, so, and, and that's a big shift, isn't it? Because we've been, as you said, we've been kind of invisibly and innocently conditioned to think that certain things might cause stress or burnout. Yeah. So if yeah. you're going through a divorce or a lovely pandemic um, or, you know, losing your job or kids, you know, being, being whatever, it would, we've been taught that those things are contributing factors. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's, you know, when you think about it, it's like, well, how, how, how would that even work? Cause if we, if we look at workplace stress, you know, we've all had the experience of um, feeling stressed at work about work and we've had the f- the experience of feeling stressed about work when we're not at work yeah and we've all had the experience of not feeling stressed at work and not feeling stressed about work when we're not at work so it's like and and for me it's like well hang on a minute you just tell me exactly which which bit which bit of the work where where is the meaning held where is the meaning held in work where 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 are you going to put that label of stress on what is it when i walk through the door mm. is it that particular desk over there is it is it is it that person and is it are they is it all is it always like that and so when we start getting cur- curious about it and we start looking at our own experience we ju- we just see how variable it is yeah and and it varies between person to person it varies from us moment to moment yeah but it's interesting isn't it the conceptual mind likes to attribute it to yeah. something or yeah pin it to something it's like what can i pin this to oh, i'll pin it to that boss yeah, yeah. so when that boss isn't there i'll you know i'll pin it to the fact that i my hours are too long right now of course we're not saying you know work 20 hours a day and that's a good idea um it may or may not be who knows but what we're saying is that each and every one of us will have an intelligence in their inbuilt gps to know what's right for them if 
they're able to listen to that from a clear, high quality of mind, a high aperture. Yeah. It will tell them. But it's funny, I was talking to a client yesterday and she was sort of talking for about 10, 15 minutes. And the only thing that came out of my mouth after that was, don't take your reality so seriously right now. <laughs> yeah. Right? And, yeah. and she just sort of went, oh yeah. <laughs> because all the feeling state that she was in was giving her a clue to back off all the narratives. She just made a load of narratives and attributions, right? And he's like, oh yeah. And that noticing in itself did loads for her, yeah. right? So, okay, so let's just check in with our listener now. So imagine they're listening and going, okay, so these two chaps are saying um, that there's this thing called burnout that I may or may not know is going on. And actually any feeling I might have in that direction is, isn't anything to do with what's going on in the content of my experience, my circumstances, my environment, my past, my future. It's all just uh, an indicator that I'm seeing life in a slightly contracted way. Mm. Now, so then they might go, right, okay, well, if I'm still feeding that, so what? Uh, how, how's this helpful? So how would we answer that bit of the puzzle? I mean, it's it's unlikely something that's going to go away in the in the click of a finger. You know, sure we can have we can have insights around what's what's going on for us, and for me, that's the that's the that's the big shift when it comes to well, what do I what do I do about this? Is because um, if we're operating from the narrow aperture of our our conditioning that well the the stress is coming from the workplace and the situation then it makes total sense to us to try and change that situation i mean i i know this from when i was in on on, on the front lines of medicine and working conditions changed to the detriment of my training i mean i i uh, i um I became the 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 rep for the for the for the union and and I was doing everything that I possibly could because it made total sense to change the conditions to change the conditions in order to feel a different way mm. and but the sh- the shift comes from seeing that well oh how, oh 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 my my feelings aren't telling me about that the job or the person or or even um how I am or who I am or what I'm like you know yeah. my feelings aren't telling me any of that at all and and so having that shift just takes all the pressure off and 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 really there's there's nothing to do per se other than to you know, stick around this conversation and and have have that shift in your understanding because it just it just changes everything. Yeah, and and I think you know, so it's at one level, it's as simple as noticing, but or and it's noticing plus an understanding, right? And 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 the, and the noticing plus the understanding, the understanding bit we're talking about is understanding that there's no, if you like causal power in the environment, the situation, the, 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 whatever's going on in your perceived mm-hmm. reality, right? Mm-hmm. So knowing it's not coming from there is very useful to understand and notice. Point two, we also then need to notice, oh, that doesn't mean it's coming from me, mm-hmm. right? Because then you might go, okay, oh, wow. <laughs> so it's, it's not my boss, the circumstances, the long hours. It must be me. What yeah. kind of person am I, the fact that I create all this stressful burnout thinking, yeah, and then we kind of don't blame the outside world, we then start blaming this thing, me. <laughs> That's not helpful either, right? No. Because <laughs> we've just shifted it a little bit from yeah. w- w- one perceived outside object to another. Yeah, yeah. What we're saying is that, the, that these sensations and, and perceived reality are just coming through the system, through, yeah. through, through the mind. Um, we will feel them because at one level we are sentient beings, right? And that's the joy of being uh, an activity of consciousness. You want to call it that, you know, sentient being. That's the joy. We feel stuff. And the only problem that we have, uh, and I say problem with sort of inverted commas, but is 
we start to make up stories and narratives about what that feeling is or isn't and yeah. needs to be done about it. Yeah. Right? Now, when we notice we don't, that it's, in, it's uh, not coming from the outside world, it's not coming from this thing called me, um, we, we just become more like the two, three-year-old who can have tantrums, you know, impressive ones, um, <laughs> but it doesn't do anything to them. They're totally neutral to it. It's totally impersonal to it. Yeah. And then another wonderful thing happens once that aperture opens is intelligence, common sense, wisdom, resilience pop in to fix this perceived reality if it needs any adjusting. Yeah. And again, you know, we've, we've all, we, 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 I think we've all experienced, and we all do experience this on a fairly regular basis. We just don't tend to make much of it because yeah. <laughs> we, 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 so much of our attention is on the content of our experience that, that when, when we sort of drop out of that and back into the flow of life, um, and, are the the thing that we were worried about the situation the problem that we were trying to solve kind of solves itself and we we just like oh yeah I j-. it's almost in retrospect isn't it we almost look back and go oh yeah it's like yeah no that 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 thing sorted itself out uh, and and we don't we don't really acknowledge that as like well you know this idea of me <laughs> wasn't the one in control of doing that but while it while it makes sense you know, for me, this is the thing, you know, it's all, it's all totally innocent is that while it makes sense when, when, when you think that you're in control of, of, of how things are going to, how things are going to turn out, then of course, of course you're going to try and control them. Yeah. It makes, it makes total sense. It makes total sense. And it, that's, that's the beauty of this is that just to see, just to see, the, all those times in your life where, oh, hang on, you know, I kind of let go of that. <laughs> I kind of let go of that and it was all right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just, oh, it's liberating. I mean, it's, it's that wonderful paradox, and we could do a whole p- podcast on this, <laughs> between ordinary and miraculous, right? Because it, it's absolutely what you said. It, we're already doing this. And, and two areas we tend to do this in, you know, if I'm just going to generalize, is the weather and dreams, Mm-hmm. So most of us with weather and dreams are not trying to fix it, control it, worry about it. I mean, we, we might occasionally worry about the weather if we've got a barbecue coming up, but you know, it's like, well, that's just what the weather's doing today. You know, so we just let that come and go. Mm-hmm. Right. And we know it's out. It's not something to be controlled. We, we might plan a little bit, you know, take an umbrella or whatever, if we don't like getting wet. And the same with a dream. We, we, we just think, well, that's a dream, you know. Mm. Um, and even our kids, if our kids have an, uh, a dream at night and they call out, we go and explain the nature of dreams. We don't fix the reality, mm. right? The perceived reality therein. So the, the, I suppose the, the bit that you and I are pointing people to see when we work with them um, which has such a foundational, pervasive, transformative, exponential impact <laughs> is the, the nature of reality itself, right? Mm. Um, and, and as you say, when we don't try and control it or put stuff on it, it just sort of changes. Um, and actually, I'm going to make a distinction on something you said earlier, um, just to check what you meant. So yeah. you said at the beginning of this little bit when I asked you a question, things can't change in an instant. Now, I'm not sure I <laughs> yeah. agree with you on that. <laughs> I might do, but did, tell me I what you regretted it as soon as I said, said it, to be honest. Oh, did you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. It's okay. Well, this is real time here. This, this, yeah, this, yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is Giles and Pierce having a real time conversation. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's certainly possible. It's it's certainly possible. I mean, ev- everything happens on a normal distribution curve, doesn't it? So at one end of that normal distribution curve, sure, it's it's absolutely possible for to have a conversation with somebody along these lines, the conversation that we're having, and for somebody to just like almost like the the, the penny to drop there and then in that instant, and life to change completely. Um, so yes, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm completely on board with that. I'm, I think I was probably meaning more along the lines of a normal distribution curve where, you know, generally, because, because 
because of that, you know, we've spent this, I mean, I, I came across this understanding when I was 46 years old. So I had 46 years of conditioning, yeah. you know, from my upbringing, from school, from university, from medical school, from the television, from life out there, from every conversation with every human being I've ever had to that point w- was, was pointing in the opposite direction. Yeah. It so, was pointing to the content of my experience as opposed to the, the fact of experience, which is what we're talking about. Here. Exactly. And I think that there's a, there's a couple of points to build on what you're saying, because I think it's probably useful for people who are like going, well, do things change or don't they? So I think that there's, there's two things I would say. I, I'd say w- one is that what's going on in our perceived reality or we, what we might call the game of life doesn't necessarily change in an instant right? So a working culture in an organization doesn't necessarily overnight, you go back in and everyone's very different, right? That can take time, which, you know, but how I feel about that, yeah. right, could change in an instant. L- yeah. Like the rain, you know, I can be out in the rain getting wet and cold. And, oh, I can't believe I'm getting wet. And then you're like, I'm loving the rain. Yeah. Oh, it's, I feel alive. I'm joyful i'm outside and appreciate and that can change an instant so that bit can change an instant now you you use an interesting phrase i hadn't really thought about before which is the curve of normal distribution on how change might happen now if we think what is the reason it would be like that yeah and that is is what, what you hinted at that you know 40 odd years of conceptual mind conditioning Mm. um to sort of (laughs) undo in a way but the, the the way we talk about undoing conditioning is quite different to uh, conventional traditional therapy or uh, other things because <laughs> we're not saying you've got to wade through it, unpick it, um, get closure on everything, get acceptance, talk it through, um, understand the narrative, blah, blah, blah. What we're actually saying is that it can dissolve in the instant as we say if the aperture opens and we touch this space you can just have this pop yeah. um and they tend to be the people on the videos that, that we always use yeah. as testimonials people have had those pops right that's like whoa yeah however for for, for other people it tends to happen a little bit more what i would call drip 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 than whoosh yeah if, <laughs> if that makes sense um but it's not because we've been talked about it and 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 squelch through the mud on it um and we're going slightly off topic here but it's it's probably useful to to, to point this out but is because and i don't know about you but you will get i will get clients who will have insights about things that have changed in their life that have nothing to do what we talked about oh absolutely yeah random weird stuff changes so we know it's not about applying more conceptual mind thinking to it have you i mean does that make sense and yeah totally and like i mean i've i've had clients who've you know, pop, pop, popped in front of me, and I've, and, I, and I've had and, I, and I've had clients where it's been drip wise, and um, I mean the 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 client I talked about at the, at the beginning who was severely burnt out. With him, we had a number of sessions, and then I got a, um, a text after one of the sessions that we'd had. We'd been out. I do um, I do a, a lot of my coaching out out in the hills. We go walking, mm. and talking. So I think it's the perfect arena to talk about this stuff. And um, and he was. Um, he was a he was at his child's he he like had dropped in and his child's football match on the way home and um he he his insight came from when he was just having a conversation with some some of the other dads and in that conversation just it just suddenly occurred to him oh oh i don't see the world the same way that they do anymore <laughs> and i i you know a, a f- couple of weeks ago i would have done and so mm-hmm. what you said, Piers, about, um, I mean, the, 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 the kind of like the phrase is like, nothing's different, but everything's changed. It's, it's our experience of it that, that, that changes. And, and, you know, when it boils down to it, experience is all we get. That's all we get is an experience. And yes. that's really important to see because the rest of it is narrative. Yes. Again, now, experience. Let's but, just pause then, on that bit, Giles, because I just yeah, okay. right. I just want I want to just really just give two minutes on that bit. Again, we're segueing off, but this is all good stuff. So, because that is so key, isn't it? Right? Because what I hear and what you're saying is, 
is that at one level you could say, um, you know, there is an outside world going on there and it depends how I feel about it and what this understanding might do is change how you feel about it, right? Mm. So there is a narky boss, but I'm going to feel okay about that narky <laughs> yeah. boss. Some right? reframing type thing. Yeah, reframing. Now we're going further than that. We're going, no, 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 no. The, the aperture you're in doesn't just change how you see things in the outside world. We're actually saying the outside world itself is a product of the aperture, right? So the very, because some people won't even see the narky boss. And on some days that boss isn't narky to you. Mm. And that's not because they decided not to be narky to you. It's mm. because you're just not creating, not that you are the creator, but you're, that's not in your experience. So there's nothing fixed in the outside that we're trying to see differently. It's much more about how it, how it manifests for us. Yeah. Right. So now that the wonderful thing about that for me means there's no lid mm. because it's not like, well, how do I deal with this difficult situation better? Because the situation will just stop looking difficult. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, so, so, not, it, it, so yeah. when we say there's only, when you said there's only the experience of it is even the it isn't fixed, is it? No, no, absolutely not. You, uh, I mean, you, you, it's like you're, you, you kind of inhabit a, 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 a different reality in a way. Yeah. I mean, I, I, um, I was, I was just telling this story the other, the other day about how I got, I, I was in, I was in like really heavy, I was due to give a workshop. Um, I got stuck in traffic and I was going to be late and I was getting mm. really, really stressed about the whole thing. And, um, and I was in, I was in Newport. It was, cause, you know, it's quite a busy town center and people drive a bit aggressively sometimes and people are cutting me up and everything. And I was like, yeah, you know, I was yelling and I was trying to squeeze into gaps and everything. And, and then, and then again, I, I, I had that moment that I had that moment of, oh, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I thought that my feelings then were telling me about the content of my experience, which in that moment was the other drivers and, and the fact that they were cutting me up and everything. And it really looked like that's where my feelings were coming from. And when, when I, when I fell out of that in that, in that moment, it's like, oh no, 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 my feelings can't come from, from that at all. It just doesn't, doesn't work like that. Well, then I, well, then I settled down. My aperture opened. Mm. I got back to, you know, an experience of, of wisdom and peace of mind and common sense. And it's like, Giles, pull over, tell the person that you're due to meet that you're going to be late. So I did. And I phoned them up and said, I'm going to be about 15 minutes late. And they were like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no problem at all. Don't worry yeah. about it. And then, and then carried on driving. And exactly, I was still stuck in the same traffic with the same aggressive drivers. And, and yet I, I, I like I inhabited a different a, a different reality then because all the people who I saw cutting me up it was like yeah I just felt compassion for them because it's like it was clear that they were having the kind of day that I'd been having ten minutes previously. Mm. So we re we really do it, it, that thing about you know nothing nothing's different but everything changes. I think is 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 really is really and it's strange. that simple really in one way, isn't it? I mean, well, the way you so describe ordinary. that, it it, so it, it, it is simple, but it's I think it's about recognizing that there's no limit to what that can happen about. Yeah. Because we might go, well, that's fine about being late for a meeting, but what about if it was about serious health issue or about my career or about a loved one? Yeah. Surely, you know, you, I wouldn't get that shift. But we're saying, yes, anything. Because, you know, these are universal ways that mechanics of the system. So mm -hmm. it, it doesn't, it isn't just like, oh, well, it can happen on that and not that. Mm -hmm. That's available if we, if we look. So just bring it a little bit back to burnout then, because I said that's what we're meant to be talking about. Um, if, if someone was listening to this, Giles, and thinking, hmm, maybe I have got, you know, the little early warning signs of it. Mm. What would you kind of, apart from having some more detailed conversations, maybe with you or I, but what, what would you give them for now as a kind of something to consider or explore? Well, I, I mean, I think if we can if we can really start to listen to our intuitive voice, I think anybody in that situation, anybody in that situation, on some level knows what the answer is. 
Right. They they know what's right for them, and it's the and it's the it, it's it's usually the fact that they're telling themselves a whole load of stories about why they can't have what it is they want. Whether that's you know to have a word and say you know I can't do I can't do these or I need some time off or you know we need to restructure things in a way where you know I can I can get more sleep or something like that you know just like really basic stuff. Um, I, I think just really tuning into the tuning into what's right for us instead of getting instead of getting lost is. It's always becoming more aware, becoming more aware of the of the chatter, of the narrative that's going on, and just starting to let go of that. You know, we we hold on to it because it makes sense to hold on to it. It makes sense mm. because it looks like holding on to to all that narrative is what's keeping us safe, is what's getting us through life, and it's just not. It's quite the opposite. It's it's getting in the way, really. And so it's, you know, becoming a bit more confident in in letting go of that, just trying a little experiment. You know, I've got some, somebody at the moment who I'm just, you know, like I send, literally, I, I just send them a text a week. Here's your mind experiment for this week. It's like week one, become more aware of of the narrative in your head. Nothing else. That's all I want mm. you to do. Week two, just try, you know, stepping back from it. Just, just try letting mm. go of that narrative a little bit, and seeing that you don't instantly fall down a hole and life doesn't fall apart. Because I, I think you know that's kind of inherent in all of that conditioning that we've got from the world, isn't it? It's like, well, if you're not in control of things, your life's going to fall apart. And I'm sorry, but that's just not the case at all. Mm. It's the opposite of that. Yeah, and I, so it's, it's that awareness or that noticing, plus knowing, you know, is what you were saying there that we're always okay. You, yeah. you can't break the system, right? Um, you cannot break it. You, the, the, not, not the capacity for realization and love and fulfillment and joy and inspiration and, and being part of, you know, wonderfulness and, and universal connection. You can't break that. Whatever we do in the content of our reality, you know, on the screen, you can't break the TV part of us, hmm. right? So, you know, it, it's, it's knowing that, and even however bad it's got, the, the even the phenomena of of breakout is the system starting to get better again by giving you some. Hey, yeah, you're running the car in the wrong way. You, yeah. you, you know, so it, it's you're always going to be okay at the level that matters. Um, you, there's also this beautiful inbuilt resourcefulness wisdom as you, as, as you described it in your little example when you know you, you just settled down pulled over called the guy you know and said yeah. I'm going to be late and, and that would happen like the big stuff as well you know that's always available too we're only ever one thought away from that you know so really it, it's, it's so lovely isn't it because however bad it's got mm. it's not mm. right because it, it's always going to be okay at the level that matters that doesn't mean it's going to be okay in that you're going to have a you know get a new job next week. We're talking about being okay at the level of the system, okay. the capacity for joy and fulfillment and inspiration. So, so just about really about people noticing, isn't it? And, and noticing what it isn't maybe rather than noticing what it is. Yeah. And, and seeing, I mean, one, one of the starting places I, 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 I go from in my work is to, it, it, is to really ground people in the, the the fact that it's it's only ever happening now, <laughs> you know this this experience of life can only ever be happening now, and and um, it's it, th- those those feelings of tension and stress, you know, if we can kind of like make make that link on some level that oh well, I I only ever get those feelings of stress and tension when I come out of when I come out of now when I come out of reality and I'm off and I'm and I'm off in story. And that you know that that's helpful to see as well. Mm. Yeah. So let's give it a summary, and then so so what we're saying is as this phenomena we call burnout that has some kind of symptoms that you may be maybe you're already seeing and going yeah I'm on the way to burnout there may be some things going on for you that you haven't quite decided is haven't thingified as burnout but you kind of know that life doesn't feel great and you're probably putting that down to that's because of my job my situation right so point one was saying just notice a bit more about 
what you're feeling you know are, are you are you does it feel like you're rowing or 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 sailing and recognize then that that's not because of the situation yeah right that that's that's a key thing and then go actually i'm only really get that when i'm sort of not in the presence when i'm in my head about it right mm-hmm. and that can happen when i'm in the situation when i'm asleep at night you know that, that so the variability of when that happens just again is another clue okay this is this is the mind mm. then what we're saying is hey guess what? It's okay you're feeling that because they're just helpful indicators, a barometer to say, Mm. back off a bit, back off a bit. Mm. Notice it's a story. Notice it's an illusion, right? That comes and goes. Mm. And there's this beautiful restorative system that we have that will help us come back to equilibrium and balance and common sense about how we want to run our games of life. You know, and it might be, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to work less hard or I'm going to say no to that or yes to that or whatever that will all come through itself yeah. once we notice all the former parts of it yeah yeah so it's i think you're right it's, it's about us just being able to just to press pause for a moment and just notice and step back and going actually you know is there more to life than this feeling yeah. of it yeah yeah i think that that I, I i like the way that you've you you, you you've described that because i i do see it as they're almost being I mean, this is, you know, just a metaphor, but, but there being two parts to it in that, the, the, there's the, there's kind of like the, there's the realization about what's going on. And then there's the experience of, of, of life, um, after that little misunderstanding has been, has been cleared up. Mm. And so, I mean, for instance, I've, I've had, I, I, I had two clients who presented almost identically. They were both, they both identified with burnout. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that, that was, you know, that was what they said they come with. And, um, they were both facing difficult decisions about whether or not to leave, leave their career essentially, because that was the only solution that they could come up with, um, with that closed aperture. And they'd been debating it in their heads for a very long time. And, once that first piece of the jigsaw had fallen into place about how they were actually experiencing life and what their what their their feelings were telling them um as opposed to what they weren't telling them one of them was like skipped happily back to work um and it's like oh you know like my thing was that i didn't think i was able to cope and i and i and i thought that i i had to control the situation and that that's when the situation was where my feelings would come from so you know she skipped off happily back to work and and is now a you know a beacon of light and hope in her mm-hmm. department even though her department has got even more busy and stressful since covid and everything and everyone turns to her when you know she was the one who was burnt out and was going to leave whereas whereas the other client is like oh i've been ignoring my intuition for way too long this career isn't right for me but i've been trying to make it work and so yeah. uh, and it was a, it so they both came with the same thing mm. they both saw through the illusion if you like of 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 how it looks like life works and but then when it came to that second part of the jigsaw which is getting back in the flow of life um reconnecting to you know intuition and common sense and creativity creative ideas and uh, all all that good stuff well they went in very very different directions you know this isn't prescriptive in any way at all it's just like it's like well no you can it's just like getting back to getting back to real life really and that's a great example isn't it of how clarity turns up differently for different people right and it would as a coach it's not our role to go oh i think this person needs to finish the career or get back into it you know i have yeah. no idea what Absolutely. clarity will do for someone but yeah. we know we know that inner gps is there for people once yeah. they've calibrated themselves to it right and you just give a great example of how it went different place different people right yeah. and that's that's the beauty of what wakes up um when we're not in in, in a closed aperture when we're not rowing and, and and that's why we it's useful to catch it early on because otherwise because your your GPS just goes off on one it gets all wobbly when when we're in burnout right yeah. so we make dumbass decisions so we leave a job that actually we could have been fine with yeah. or we stay a job and going I'm gonna I'm gonna put my broad shoulders on and do it so yeah beautiful example of of how that turns up um, so Giles I think we've reached the end of time these things always fly by um, so. Uh, 
thank you massively because I think it's been great. Anything you, any leaving comments you want to say to anyone or uh, the listeners as, as we finish this? I, I, ju- I just want people to know, you know, I, I, and I hope you've got a, a feel of that from this conversation is that whatever you're going through, whatever you're going through, no matter how in deep you are with it, no matter what you're going through, that there's hope. You know, yeah, there's every a, reason to be hopeful. That, that, that's a lovely thing to say. And I think, you know, I'll, I'll just finish and say, even if you don't really, and I would say this quite a lot, if you don't really get what we're on about, but directionally it makes sense, right? Even though you can't quite put your finger on what it is we've said, right? <laughs> um, directionally, does it, does it sound like there's something there that we're talking about that you want to explore more? If you do, then... Um, you know, definitely reach out. I'm sure Giles will be very happy for people to reach out with you. Is that okay, Giles? I'll put yeah, your details in the sure, show notes. Yeah. 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 Um, or, or to me as usual. So I'll put some details in the show notes. If something in this conversation you're like, oh, what, what is that that they're on about? You know, have another conversation with us or listen to some other episodes. And remember that beautiful curiosity and that hope. So Giles, thank you so much. And um, everyone Thanks else, very much. Um, have fun being curious. Cheers, bye-bye. Until next time. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast, please reach out and leave us a review and a comment. If you want more info, check out makingchangework.co.uk or Piers Thurston on LinkedIn.